This is the fifth and final Passion reading for Holy Week, and it is titled Calvary. The soldiers now had charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to a place called Skull Hill, in Hebrew, Golgotha. As they led him away, they laid hold of Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country. On him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. Following him was a great company of people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. The days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never gave suck. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things with a green tree, what will happen with a dry one? There were also two others, criminals whom they led along to be put to death with him. When they came to the place called Golgotha, they gave him wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. It was the third hour, and there they crucified him. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The two criminals they crucified with him, one on his right, the other on his left, with Jesus in the middle. The scripture was then fulfilled, which says, And he was numbered with the transgressors. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they cast lots to divide his clothes and decide what each should take. They made four parts, one for each soldier. There remained his tunic. This was without seam, woven in one piece from top to bottom. They said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to decide who shall have it. The scripture was thus fulfilled, which says, They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. These things the soldiers did, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Over his head was put the charge against him. Pilate wrote the notice to be put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This title was read by many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. The chief priests of the Jews then said to Pilate, You should not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. People stood by watching. Those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross, that we may see and believe. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. The thieves also who were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. And one of the criminals who hung there with him mocked him, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are getting what we deserve, for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Near to the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. About the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of them that were standing there heard it, they said, He is calling for Elijah. After this, Jesus knew that all things were accomplished. Fulfilling the scripture, he said, I thirst. There was a jar of wine standing there. One of them ran immediately to get a sponge. 
He filled it with wine, put it on a reed, held it up to his mouth, and gave it to him to drink. Others said, Wait and see if Elijah will come and save him. When Jesus had received the wine, he cried with a loud voice, It is finished. Then he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rock split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he died, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. All the people who had gathered to see the sight, when they saw what had happened, turned away, beating their breasts. Those who had known him stood at a distance, as also the women who had followed him from Galilee. Among them was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph, and Salome the mother of the sons of Zebedee. It was the day of preparation before the Sabbath, and this was Passover Sabbath. Therefore, so that the bodies should not remain on the crosses during the Sabbath, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies removed. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. One who saw it is our witness, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth that you also may believe. These things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, They shall look on him whom they pierced. By this time evening had come. A respected member of the council, Joseph of Arimathea, who was one who was also looking for the kingdom of God, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their purpose and deed, he was a disciple of Jesus secretly, for he feared the Jews. Now he took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was astonished that he could be dead already. He called for the centurion and asked him whether Jesus was already dead. When he was assured by the centurion that it was so, Pilate granted him the corpse and commanded that it be given over to him. Joseph bought fine linen and came and took the body of Jesus. Nicodemus came also, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. It was he who had first come to Jesus by night. They then took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb which no one had ever been buried. Joseph laid the body in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb, and departed. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph were sitting there opposite the sepulcher, and saw where he was laid. Then they returned and prepared spice and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested according to the commandment. On the next day, the day after the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees went together to Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that that impostor said while he was still alive, After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command that the sepulchre be made secure until the third day to stop his disciples from coming and stealing him and saying to the people, He has risen from the dead, making the final deception worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard. Go and make it as secure as you know how. They went and made the sepulchre secure. They sealed the stone and set a watch. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and always. Amen.